Welcome to another episode of Rehab Now with consultant physiatrist Dr. Paula Dawson, our rehabilitation medical specialist, Dr. Wonderful Smarty. Hi, Doc. Oh, me wonderful Smarty. <laughs> Hi, Alicia. How are you? I am well. I am well, you. listeners. And I'm your host, Alicia Taylor. Today, we're going to be talking about spasticity management. Wow. Took me a while oh, yeah, to be able to say that word properly. Spasticity. Say it with me, listeners. Spasticity. Yes. Okay, great. So remember to check out our social media pages on Instagram. It's Rehab Institute Caribbean. Dr. Paula Dawson and Alyssa Taylor Music on Facebook. It's Rehabilitation Institute of the Caribbean and our website, rehabcaribbean.com. All right, Doc. Yes, spasticity mm-hmm. management. Mm-hmm. First of all, what exactly is spasticity before we talk about the management of it? All right. So anybody ever call you spastic yet? I say, oh, you're so spastic. I don't, I can't recall. Okay. Maybe. So some of your cousins, when they come up and you're trying to dance, and they say, well, it's so spastic. So st- that means you're stiff. I remember my cousin and I said something like that. Too. Yes. Well, you can't dance, though. I can't. Oh, you're so spastic then. I Anyways, am. guys. Spastic. <laughs> so- spasticity is a type of stiffness in the muscle. Mm-hmm. But the interesting thing about spasticity, it is a stiffness which is dependent on how fast you move the limb. So... In medical term, it is increased tone, which is velocity dependent. Mm -mm. But breaking it down to English, it means that when you're trying to move, for example, if your biceps was spastic, when you try to extend your hand, Mm -hmm. your forearm, it pulls back. So if you do it slowly, you may not feel the spastic, you may not feel that pull back. And so it's a velocity dependent increase in tone. So like when you want to dance fast, Mm -hmm. you get it. (laughs) <laughs> you get this thing spasticity but in medical it in the medical field it's not as a result of dancing though what is it ah i'm glad you asked <laughs> so as a result of an upper motor neuron problem what does that mean something wrong in the brain i knew it good girl it's always a brain thing man and the spinal cord right and so the brain good and girl. the spinal cord are considered to be a part of your central nervous system and so whenever, there, whenever there's a problem in the central nervous system, you lose the smooth movements that we get. For example, when you're dancing oh. or you're going to pick up something, spastic. you become spastic. So spasticity is an increase in tone, which is velocity dependent. Mm. Now, mm-hmm. the interesting thing about spasticity is that because it is related to an issue either in the brain or the spinal cord, there are several conditions that can cause spasticity. Okay, let's go through them. Well, some of them, because I'm of them, sure it's a yes. lot. The, the one that comes, well, the, you have the common one in children. Children is with cerebral palsy mm. will have spasticity. So that stiffness you see those little children have, sometimes they can't extend their arms or yeah, they can't extend their legs one. or their shoulder or their back or their head are really, really tight, that is spasticity. Mm. And that is because in cerebral palsy, those children would have gotten an injury to the brain while they were either, one, in utero, because we did this before, Mm -hmm. in utero when the mother is pregnant, around the time of delivery, Mm. or up until they're three years old, so there's an injury to the brain. Would that be considered trauma? Trauma is one cause. Mm -hmm. So you have, it could be traumatic, like physical trauma, a baby fall off the bed. Mm -hmm, It could be mm -hmm, near drowning. mm -hmm, It could mm -hmm. be meningitis and infection. Mm -hmm. It could be decreased blood flow, like when you're in the the uterus. You know, it could be an infection. So there are several things that can cause decreased blood flow to the brain. Mm -hmm. In in cerebral palsy, it's commonly seen, more commonly seen in very premature babies. You know, when they're less than 26 weeks, Mm -hmm. you know. 28 weeks, you know, full term is usually anywhere between 38, 40 weeks is what they say when you're, you know, you're ready to deliver. Deliver, And anything beyond 38 weeks is full term. And so when the babies are born younger, their brains are not yet 
fully developed and so and the blood vessels are kind of friable and very fragile mm -hmm. and so you can have decreased blood flow that's one group okay the babies and then it's seen in a, the big group of people with um, brain injury like stroke stroke patients that stiffness right, okay. yes man yeah. stiffness that you get from stroke and in addition to that, the stiffness you get in the arms or legs when you have a spinal cord injury. Yeah, that makes sense. Right. And so this, it could be stroke. It could be a brain traumatic injury. Um. I once had a patient that uh, was hitting his head with a hammer. Uh, he And they... Somebody, somebody, so. the, somebody hit him in his head with a hammer. Yeah. Yeah. And so... He was hitting the head with a hammer, but it could be motor vehicle accident with a brain trauma. Mm. It could also be tumor in the brain that can cause, because that can injure the brain as well. God, it's a lot of stuff, man. Yeah, and there's more, you know, because you have multiple sclerosis, which is, uh, we spoke about multiple sclerosis. Really? I can't even that remember. Can... Did we call speak about multiple sclerosis? Multiple sclerosis is a type of neurological disease where you lose what we call the myelin sheet over the nerve. So each, think of the nerve as an electrical wire mm -hmm. and the plastic over the copper wire. So the nerve is made up of two layers. The middle part is a copper wire and the plastic on the outside is a sheath that protects the copper wire. Mm -hmm. That sheath is another cell, actually, called a Schwann cell. I remember all of this. Just, how do you remember all of this? I don't know either. Holy Spirit. Oh, and so those, those, those cells actually... Um, they die, right? And so you have demyelination. Mm. And when you have demyelination, then you have problems with the conduction of the information. Mm. And so you can get it in the brain, you can get it in the peripheral nerves. And so that there's several other things that can happen in the brain um, that can cause spasticity. Mm -hmm. Spinal cord injury, as you know, can be traumatic, That's whether true, it yeah. is motor vehicle accident, mm. gunshot wound, mm. or fall, or infection mm. in the spine. How does, as well. how does one get an infection? I feel like I'm, you know, being tangential, but how does one get an infection in the spine? All right. So, you know, back in the day when tuberculosis was common, okay. people could get TB in, in the mm, spine called mm, POTS disease, mm. right? And also you can get uh, an infection in the spine seeded from infection in the blood from oh. another, from, right, okay. so a secondary Very spread. Well. Okay. Or it can be primary if you had a spine procedure done, if you had... Um, what is an injection or surgery? Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm, secondary mm -hmm. to that, not very common because the skill and the technique that they use, everything is done quite sterile. So you tend not to have complications like that. But it can be as a result of an infection in the spine or an inflammation, which is just uh, it's it's increased inflammatory markers without infection. So there's no bacteria or virus mm -hmm. or fungus or anything mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And so something is causing the spine to be inflamed, mm -hmm. but not an infection. Mm. Right. God, inflammation as well. That's a horrible thing. It is a horrible thing. So the thing with spasticity, though, why does this even occur? All right, so the body is just an amazing thing. So there's a, there's a beautiful um, dance or concerted uh, relationship between your agonist, which which is muscle moving in one direction, and the antagonist mm -hmm. moving in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. right? Literature. Mm -hmm. Let's show you talk about agonist and antagonist. Oh yes, that's right. Of course. Never teach me about that. Antagonist, antagonist. Anyway, yes, ah, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm gonna have to look that up. <laughs> and so, right, and so usually when you you're supposed when you're going to bend, bend your elbow, your triceps supposed to relax because your biceps. Mm -hmm. will be bending and the triceps supposed to relax. Mm -hmm. So the body through the spinal cord and the brain, it tells the triceps to relax. Now imagine if you're bending your elbow and the triceps is still pulling you back. That's oh. essentially what spasticity is. And so we have <laughs> in in a, in a, in spasticity there, and I'm going to sound very medical now, right? Mm -hmm. There's something called the descending tract. So there's there, there, are, there are channels going down to the level to to keep things nice and smooth. Okay. All right, so it's like an inhibitory, so it kind of quiet down your reflex. Mm -hmm. But whenever you lose that controlling, descending mm -hmm. control, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you lose the smoothness. Mm -hmm. And so that you tend to have more reflexes. So it's a really exaggerated reflex. So the upper motor neuron, the brain and the spinal cord will control your reflexes. So spastic is kind of a... A function of the reflex arch. So when you hit the biceps, it looks go up, yeah. Right. <laughs> and so in spasticity, you tend to have increased reflexes as well. Increased reflexes. Increases. That makes sense to me. Yes. 
that Why? makes sense in my brain. Because it, it, it's connecting it a little bit more. Yes. Increased. Because when you hear reflex, Absolutely. everybody just think about her. Absolutely. You know, so when you say increased reflexes, they say, oh, right. All right okay, and so good. we would all be very jittery and jumpy mm-hmm. and jerky. Mm-hmm. Like spastic, spastic people can be quite jerky if we don't have that descending control. Mm-hmm. So the brain which is the control center, will send these signals going down to that inner center. Just smooth out yourself. Got smooth it. out yourself. Yeah, man, it's a spastic. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. And so spasticity can be very problematic. Spasticity can affect your okay, good. movement. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Can it affect your mood? No, movement, movement. I mean, no, I heard movement. That's what I asked about mood. But well, right. you know what? It can cause some depression. Why? Because it can cause, for example, someone who's quite spastic and they can't open their legs. Say your AD doctors, which are the muscles that cross your legs, especially in children or, or stroke patients where mm. you need to nurse them or clean them. They can have some depression issues. They can have issues about cosmesis, which is why, how they look, yeah. you know, because sometimes the elbow, especially in a stroke patient, is pulled up and the wrist might be flexed in like that. So okay, that is so it's spasticity. A, got, okay, great. So, this, so the spasticity, mm-hmm. it pulls you up or whatever, increased reflexes, Correct. and it stays in that position that it Over pulls up? Over time. That's a master, that's a master assessment. Thanks. That is excellent, Alicia. So it doesn't, it doesn't pull you up, but over time it leads to increase in tone. So, ooh, oh. you're so good. <laughs> so spasticity has different grades. Okay. All right. Good. So you have, maybe some teachers of medicine know, you have cool. like, it's called modified Ashworth scale, right? Mm-mm. Just one scale, right? Mm-mm. And there are four grades. <laughs> so you have the first grade where there's a catch and release. So there's a catch and release. Yeah. So like if you try to move through a range of motion, you get a catch and release. Okay. Either at the beginning, the catch and release, or the catch is at the end, but it releases. All right. That's grade one. Two. Grade two now is where there's a catch, but it doesn't release right away, but it holds you less than 50% of the range of motion. And then you get that? Mm-mm. So... It's tight, but you know, tight throughout the whole range. Mm. It's tight, it tight less than half of the wrist. Say, for mm. example, you're going to extend or bend your elbow. Mm. It, it's tight less than 50%. Okay, all And right. then the, the three, yeah, that that was, um, sorry, that would that be one two. plus. That would be great. One plus. No, them have a one, one plus, two, three. And don't ask me why them have a one plus. I, I'll mm. tell you what. Well, Excuse. you don't have the time for me to tell you why. Mm-hmm. You have a one plus. But it's modified Ashworth because Mr. Ashworth made us scale first and then they modified it so anyway you have a catch and release then you have a catch where it is stiff Mm -hmm. less than half and then the other grade is where it's stiff more than half Mm -hmm. and then you have a grade where it's stiff all the way throughout and then the last grade is where it's so stiff you can't move it at all Mm -hmm. so spasticity will have the different grades you have the one one plus two Mm -hmm. the three and the four three actually five grades but the number goes up to four because there's a one plus and so to answer the question that you had, mm-hmm. you have some where it's just a catch and release, and then you have others where it's stiff all the way through. So mm-hmm. if you have a grade four, you just tight up, mm-hmm. and sometimes it's hard to release it. Mm-hmm. My God, spasticity. Mm-hmm. Spasticity. Who child? Well, okay, so we're going to have to take a break. When we get back, we're going to talk a little bit about how we treat um, spasticity. Yes, ma'am. If there is a treatment. So stay with us, please. Welcome back to Rehab Now. If you're just joining us, we are talking about spasticity management. So, Doc, grade one, grade two, grade three, grade four. One, one plus. Sorry. Grade one, one, one plus. Mm -hmm. Two, three, four. Okay. One, one plus. Mm -hmm. Nice. Great. Catch and release. Mm -hmm. Catch less than half. Mm -hmm. Um, more than half. More than half. Cat and then, then stiff all the way and then can't move at all. Ah, yeah. That's excellent. Thank you. Uh, excellent. Thank you so much. So excellent. so we're talking about the, the movement. Yes. And that's one of the things that's, that's one of the issues that we have with spasticity. But what else? Mm-hmm. What else? What can happen in spasticity? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What all else? Right, so, you know, I'm glad you asked that question because in addition, you know, you're a master interviewer. Thank you so much, Doc. Because I, I did not mention that 
in spastic, you can also have frequency of spasms. Oh, you know, and so mm. that's another way to quantify. I'm smiling because you're so good. <laughs> so there's a, that's another way to, to quantify spasticity. So, for example, sometimes a patient with spinal cord injury and they have not yet, if they're going to get back movement in the leg, mm -hmm. they don't have voluntary movement, but they may see the legs move. Mm, right. I've and seen, so that's, yes, it's true. that's, so that's involuntary that's true. spasm. And so the more involuntary spasm you have, the worse is spasticity. So really? you can yeah, so you can quantify oh, no. the spasticity the, the number of spasm to help you to determine if the, the treatment that you're now giving for the spasticity is improvement for improving. For example, if you have like five spasm every minute mm -hmm. and you start treating, you might go down to one every minute or one every five minutes. So that's another way of quantifying mm. spasticity, which is the frequency of spasm, mm. right? The thing with spasticity, you know, what, what the useful, so it has some usefulness though, you know, Tell believe it or not, usefulness. it has usefulness. For example, say a patient with a stroke or spinal cord injury and you're trying to get them to stand up and they're not quite strong enough to push up the leg. The, the stiffness in the leg can help the therapist mm. to keep them standing. Mm. So spasticity will help in standing, uh, but you don't want too much because you still want to bend the leg a little bit. Yeah. For example, if when, we're, when I'm treating a patient with spasticity, I don't take away all of the spasticity. Okay. I leave a little okay. bit because if I take away all the spasticity, they're going to get floppy. Yeah, you need a little antagonism. You need a little bit, exactly. Mm. You need a little bit of, sti uh, mm. of stiffness. Similarly, it helps to maintain your muscle bulk. For example, because the muscles are always contracting because of the stiffness, you tend to maintain the muscle bulk. Mm. For example, I mentioned some time ago, if you're immobilized, lie down, like in an ICU, you can lose up to 1% of your muscle strength per day to a maximum of, yeah, you can lose 1% of your muscle strength per day. And so, right, the thing with spasticity, if you're weak and you can't move, that sustained contraction will help you to maintain, in a, it has some benefits. It can also help you to maintain uh, venous return because what does that mean? Blood flow to the heart. You know, like when you're sedentary too much, you can get pooling of bloods in your leg, bloods, yeah, <laughs> blood, blood in your leg. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so if you have this sustained contraction in the leg, it will help to have venous return. Mm -hmm. It also helps to maintain bone density. Because when the, you always have... The thing with bone is mm. bone likes to be stressed. So bone density, which is the how strong your bone is... Bone likes to be stressed. It does. Huh. It does. Because if you sit down, your bone just get weak. Literally, <coughs> your bone get, can get weak and brittle. Mm. But when you keep walking, weight-bearing exercise is what you would do. And we should do an episode on osteoporosis. Oh my gosh, we should. Yes, because osteoporosis is where you have thinning of the bone to the point where it's easy to break, yeah. right? And so, but when you keep walking, so weight-bearing exercise, so weight-bearing may be walking weight-bearing or, or, or weight across the bone. For example, if you're lifting a heavy weight, mm -hmm. like if you have some ab a dumbbell and you're bending your elbow, that weight and that stress on the bone is helping the bone to get stronger. Mm -hmm. So you always tell you, exercise will strengthen your muscle and strengthen your bone. You always hear that, which is really true because if you, you, your muscles get weak, your bone also get thinner. <clears throat> and so with spasticity, it helps to maintain a little bit of the bone and some other things, right? Uh, but the, the problem is it can be painful. That's the negative effects now because if it pulls you in a direction in a particular way, it can cause pain. It can cause deformity. Oh, okay. Let's camp out there a little bit. Mm -hmm. This deformity can be permanent. It can be permanent. Can it be temporary? It can be temporary, Good which stuff. is why, which is where us as a, a rehab team will come in. Yeah. So it can be permanent. For example, so those sometimes you see these little children with cerebral palsy and they have like deformity around the ankle where the, the, the bones are kind of turned in. Mm -hmm, and sometimes mm -hmm. the spasticity can remain so long that they now get something called contractures, which is contractures where it's contracted and it is so stiff, the spasticity treatment will not work. Mm -hmm. So they have to consider something better like surgery, surgical release. So we'll come to you because you can do surgical release and surgical bone reconstruction around these joints. Okay. And you know, that's, we could talk about UE and KPH and Bustamante. Oh, wait, no, sir. <laughs> in terms of, yeah, man, in terms of the surgeries that they can do for bone correction. Mm -hmm. And so you can get deformity, you can get pain, uh, you can get 
um, skin issues, for example, if your hand is so spastic and you're making a fist all the time, you yeah. can't open your fingers. Yeah. Inside the palm will get all, you know, you know, kind of smelly and oh. wet and fungating. And so these are some of the negative, and I mentioned the positive benefits of, of spasticity. spasticity. All right. So now that we talk about all of that, what is the, the best way to treat Spasticity. You know I'm an algorithm girl, don't you? You are. I, I you know, it would, have, it would have been my next question. Yeah, you know. what is the algorithm? What is the algorithm? So guys, if you don't know what algorithm is, it's a stepwise approach to management. Why? Because when you should always start low and go slow. You don't jump to the you don't jump to the you don't jump to you surgery. You don't read surgery. You don't read surgery. You understand? You just you start with rehab. You start with ah my girl. Thank you. I like that. And so for spasticity management. We usually like to start first with, under the rehab section, education, because the mm. caregiver has to understand what it is, mm. how to manage it. So stretching, mm. positioning. So for example, somebody's spastic around the ankle, and what's going to happen is that the heel cords are going to get tight and pull the foot down, especially when you're seeing a stroke patient. What we try to do is to allow them to keep stretching the calves, stretching the toes, and they can wear braces mm. as well. So that's the next step. So education. Then you have stretching. Stretching is important. And then you have bracing. Really? You know, yeah, man, you can teach them to stretch. Those are the mild cases. If that doesn't work, then you need to come in to Rehab Institute of the Caribbean <laughs> or another rehab facility for <laughs> physical therapy. And if it's your hand, you can do occupational therapy with an occupational therapist as well. And so... Oh, no, no, no. Tell me what occupational therapy is. Just ah. for, that's for those who don't really know. All right. So occupational therapy is the type of rehabilitation that historically deals with your occupation. So it's mostly hands. What you do with your hands. Mm. Uh, you have occupational health will do with, which will deal with ergonomics. For example, if you sit at a desk, they want to make sure your desk position is proper. Or if you work in a factory, bending and standing. But in addition to making sure your environment is ideal for you, they also make sure your body is ideal to do the work in the environment. And so they will work on stretching you, strengthening different parts of your body to be able to do the work safely. Mm. That's prevention. And then, of course, if you have an, a medical issue that will prevent you know, use of your hands, for example. Uh, in the States where I used to work in Chicago, the occupational therapist used to deal with the hands and the cervical spine. That's in Chicago at the Rehab Institute of Chicago, now called Shirley Ryan. So that's what they used to do there. And so those occupational therapists will primarily deal with hands and cervical spine. Okay. But occupational health is a huge topic. Maybe we should get some so. occupational yeah, health. Yeah, we should, yeah. Because you have like occupational health doctors. Yeah, man, you have, the, you have that specialization at UWE. We have an occupational uh, health doctor. Maybe we should that's get like her to call. Category? Yes, man. And so you have occupational health, which is a big thing because, you know, quality of life mm -hmm. is important. Mm -hmm. But you need to ensure that where you're working, whatever it is that you're doing, it is done in an environment where it's safe for you, mm -hmm. your body, as well as the environment. Mm -hmm. All right. Makes and sense. for the people around you as well. And for people are, and you're still efficient. Right. And so the back to um, cerebral palsy treatment no spasticity treatment, treatment. is in my heart is with the cp kids yes, right so back to spasticity uh, management education is first you have to teach the caregiver or the mm -hmm. patient what they should and shouldn't do second thing is stretching, stretching. ah mm -hmm. and then we have bracing. bracing and there's so many braces we can brace the elbow to keep them straight at nights we can put the knee in a knee immobilizer to is stretch it, it the at bracing night. is painful it can be if the, the 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 limb is very tight, which is why we give medication after that to kind okay. of loosen things okay. up. There are okay. different medications we can use, Good. but it's relaxing medication. So, so bad. the side Not effects, bad. though, because we're relaxing the muscle, it might relax the brain and can get drowsy. Uh, so we use uh, we use something called baclofen, we use gabapentin, mm -hmm. we use pregabalin, mm -hmm. we use CBD oil, which is cannabinoid. Which is ganja, <laughs> not the ganja that we, we, we smoke because That's that one weird. has the THC, THC right? which is the not good. Right? The tetrahydrocannabinoid can cause a lot of brain issue, psychological issue. So this is the, the cannabinoid, the CBD, you know, that can relax. The, interesting. Mm -hmm. You don't want to do something on that, the, on the THC? Never mind. Of course Probably. we can do something on um, CBD because I use and CBD THC. oil quite a bit in my children with cerebral palsy for spasticity. My patient, my stroke patients that have spasticity, 
my patients who have pain because it can be used for pain. And there's so many things that CBD. So we should we should yes. talk to somebody. Good. We should have somebody come in and we'll talk about um, CBD oil because mm-hmm. I use it for different things in my practice for pain, for seizure as well as for um, spasticity management. Okay. So after the medications, there's something that I do, which is called intramuscular injection. Uh, what we call it? Neurolytics. So we kind of we kind of inject around the nerve or in the muscle directly to have them relax. So, yes, I know that one. You right. said that one before. Yes. Yeah. So we That's use true. nerve conduction, EMG localization to find, like, for example, if you're stiff in, like, the thumb, mm-hmm. we can actually use an electrical machine mm-hmm. to kind of find where the thumb mm-hmm. muscle and just is. inject to that point. And inject to that point and release it Free out. Man. Now, just to be clear, we're injecting to release the stiffness. The movement comes from the brain and the nerves. Oh. So even though we relax it, you may not have the strength to 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 move it. Right. So, so you have to go to something about the brain? Well, we just have to wait on the brain to recover. And that's oh. where you have cognitive rehab. And ah, all that. makes right. sense. Right. So we have... So so we use phenol and we use botulinum toxin, which is the same thing injecting your face to get nice and plump. flat, plump. Yeah, so w- that's what we inject. And then finally, there's surgery. Of course, last. So surgery will end up, you know, releasing the tendons, loosening the muscles. And in the children with cerebral palsy, we, we mentioned before, there's a spine surgery that we have a team here at UWE. Well, not here at UWE because we're not at UWE, right? <laughs> but here in Jamaica at UWE and Boston Manti <laughs> that we can do what we call rhizotomy. But, but we spoke about that in the spasti, um, the cerebral palsy episode. So if yeah. you haven't heard that, you can go and listen to that one. Gosh, man. This is like a whole lot of stuff because we're not even... We're not talking about half of the things that we won't even talk about in spasticity. I mean, and can, I it, can we, you make it worse? Can you make it worse? Do you have like triggers and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, man. If you have an infection... Oh, yes, yes, yes. It's true. That's so a good one. If, so if a child has cerebral palsy and or an older folk with a cerebral palsy and I mean spasticity and you start seeing them get things stiffer yeah. it can be because they have an infection okay so spasticity okay. gets worse, worse when with you an have infection. With an infection okay good thank you so much doc that was really good thank you listeners yes. everybody uh, big thank you to Power 106 yes. and um, remember to check out our website at RehabCaribbean.com. Thank you to our sponsors, Rehabilitation Institute of the Caribbean, providing medical care for function and performance in association with Winchester MRI, Jamaica's first choice for MR imaging. Denk Pharma, a combination of key active ingredients designed to boost the body's natural defense and Almighty Studios, a recording studio where we worship Worship, where we create worship music to praise, to worship, and to serve. That's all we have time for. I will see you guys next week. Same time, same place. God Blessings. bless. Yes. <laughs>